Hi, everyone. Uh, can you all hear me all well? Um, so thank you for inviting me. Uh, Kyoto is actually one of my favorite cities um, in the world. So this is it's a great honor to be here. And I understand that I was invited uh, specifically by the students. So that, that again, is, is another great, great honor for me. Um, and so today I'm going to be talking about the sustainable development goals from a researcher perspective, from kind of more the academic research side. Um, <clears throat> so as we know, there are these 17 sustainable development goals um, that have been proposed and developed and, and agreed on uh, by the kind of world uh, communities, national governments. And the way I, I look at the goals is that it, it's great. It's a really great um, kind of political accomplishment that it that has so much buy-in for such a di kind of diverse set of goals around sustainable development. But it's kind of a destination without a path because we don't know how to get there, right? And so this is a, this is a this is an opportunity I think for a lot of integration of, of good research to kind of help guide the policy. Uh, progress. And, um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of outline three kind of different ways that I find that the research community is engaging with the sustainable development goals as a large kind of integrated uh, research platform. I'm not talking about specific kinds of projects, not looking at specific kinds of like energy development or anything like that. I mean, large scale integrated assessments of, of uh, uh, trying to achieve the SDGs. Um, the first is conceptual frameworks. And so um, typically a lot of kind of academic research um, on the SDGs has tried to put together these kind of generalized uh, conceptual frameworks for how the SDGs kind of fit together and how we can, can promote them. And um, because they're quite generalized, they're, they're quite simplified in some ways, and um, they actually don't really get at the detail needed to really understand how to uh, make progress on, on the SDGs. Um, the second major way that research is trying to address SDGs or uh, SDG research is through these kind of interlinkage assessments. And so there's been a variety of, of methods proposed. So from looking at kind of statistical analysis on how different indicators for the SDGs are related to each other um, to various ways of, of addressing uh, interlinkage among, uh, this is a particular study looking at different types of clean energy production and how it kind of promotes and detracts from different SDG targets. Um, the International Council of Science had proposed their own uh, framework for trying to understand the interlinkage of different sustainable development goals. And I myself have put together kind of a, a framework to understand how, uh, how to understand the interlinkage of different goals. So I, I work primarily on the oceans, so looking at how the different ocean targets relate to all the other sustainable development goals. And th like it's great that we have these frameworks, um, but the scientific community kind of just ends here oftentimes. And so it's actually not clear if you do this assessment, what do you do with it? Um, and so I mean, I put myself in, the, in this camp as well, is that my, and this is going to be a little bit controversial, but my, my opinion of, of some of the interlinkages work is that it's done either A, to kind of show how complex the issue is, and therefore it's actually hard to, to make progress on it, or B, it's done to show how important the particular study area you look on, like for me it's the oceans, how important it is everywhere else. So it's kind of just a way to kind of, for, of um, research self-aggrandizement a little bit. Um, so it's, in, in some ways, it's, it's of limited usefulness. Um, the third way, and this is um, a little bit sarcastic, a little bit negative, is the, but this is what you see most often, is the SDGs are used as a way to justify the, your paper. And so it's really just it, people pay lip service to the SDGs. Often at the end of their paper, last few sentences, it's a way to just justify the work they've done. Okay, so these are the three main areas I see, I see peop, uh, researchers really engaging in the SDGs. Again, at this more kind of integrated uh, sustainability um, lens. And so coming out the other side of that, what I still see is the SDGs being a destination without a path. So research, I think, has done a very limited role so far in, in really aiding 
how do we achieve the SDGs? At the same time, in this, there's a different sect in the sustainability uh, studies world, which is developing these research frameworks um, that aren't tied to the SDGs necessarily, but are, ver are very process-based. That's really understanding how do you get where you want to go. But they have yet to, they haven't really attached to this to the to the SDGs yet. Um, but there, so the first one I'm going to bring up is the Strategic Sustainable Development Framework. And this, this framework is really based on understanding the breadth of possibilities open, open to you. And so if you understand your current state and you understand even in kind of um, general principles where you want to be going, the first thing you want to do is relate those two together by kind of, as they put it, you backcast from the future, backcast from where you want to go to where you are now so you understand that path. And then you start tracking, tracking out the variety of options available to you. Oops, the the variety of options available to you, and you track the most, um, the best route forward. And so this kind of general uh, framework um, starts to look at okay, it's it's there's there's an actual process involved. The second the second framework I'm going to address is the sustainable transitions framework, and this this framework um, is really adopted adapted from the uh, from political sciences and it there's a lot of potential with this target because or this this framework uh, because it it does three things you actually you're relating different levels of policy to each other um, from the more abstract more general down to the very specific and operational and so there's kind of these three areas that they call the strategic policy area uh, arena the tactical policy arena and the operational policy arena. The strategic policy arena is really that, that area that the interlinkage assessments operate in. It's understanding what, um, what policy paths are available to you, what different what, um, ways forward exist that are, that are actually doable. Can you achieve everything you want at the same time? The tactical policy arena gets more to the institutional lens. Um, what institutions exist, what can they contribute to, how are they connected to each other. Um, and then the operational policy arena really gets at the programmatic side. So um, what initiatives are put forward, what is needed to achieve specific goals. And you relate all three levels together in a very um, coherent way. So you actually have coherent policy moving forward. And so like I said, this is like these two tar uh, frameworks that I've that I've brought up, they're kind of like planning a path without destination because they're, they were actually developed more for um, sustainability strategizing for like companies and, and different sectors and things like that. And they haven't yet been applied for large scale sustainable development.